Greetings, everyone. My name is Brady Witten, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to online worship here at the America Street Service of First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So we're journeying through the season of Pentecost still. I think there's one more week of Pentecost, and Pentecost is a season where we celebrate the work of God's Holy Spirit in and through God's people. And so it is my prayer during this time of worship that you would experience uh, God's presence and that you would be reminded that when it comes to the need for grace and mercy, we are all in this together. Will you join me in prayer? Holy God, you have told us how to live a life worthy of your calling And you have shown us through the example of your Son, Jesus Christ, and empowered us through him. And so may this time of worship be a reminder of who you have called us to be in this world. May our hearts and our minds be open to hearing and answering that call once again. Pour your Holy Spirit out upon us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Through you I can do anything. I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible I believe, I believe in you. I believe. 
So I want to invite you to take a moment now to share the love and the peace of Christ with others. And so if, uh, if you're in your household or wherever you are with some others, uh, tell them you love them and, and share the peace of Christ with them. But also through the, the wonder of technology, you can extend that greeting to others via text message by commenting on one of our platforms. And so uh, let's share the love of Christ with one another. And I offer the peace of Christ to you. So I uh, want to encourage you to interact with us in several different ways. But first, I want to say we're really glad that you wor- uh, joined us for worship this morning. And if you're worshiping with us for the first time, I'm really glad that you came across our worship service, and I know that you'll be blessed by what you experience. So uh, no matter what platform you're on this morning, whether you're on our online church platform or YouTube, wherever it may be, Facebook, uh, you'll see different options to interact with us. And uh, one of those is called a connection card. And I really want to encourage you to take a moment and fill one of those, fill, cl- click on that link and fill out that card. Uh, you'll share a name with us, hopefully an email address. We just want to be able to know that you're here and to welcome you. Uh, you'll also see different options to share prayer requests. Uh, and I want to encourage you that if you're, if you're, Well, if you share a prayer request on one of those links or even in our live prayer uh, option, those things will be kept in confidence. But if you don't mind sharing your prayer requests with others, go ahead and put them in the comments. And that's a way of inviting all those who are worshiping with us right now to also be able to lift your needs up in prayer. You'll also see options to be able to give, uh, and uh, you can give by going to our church's website, by texting a gift, or by mailing a a check to the church. But this morning, I want to let you know about a special opportunity. Uh, And as most of you know, uh, South Louisiana and all the way up into Arkansas was hit by a really powerful hurricane, Hurricane Laura. And, uh, you know, we're still uncovering the damage and the devastation from that. But hundreds of thousands of people have been affected by these storms. And the recovery uh, will be long and hard. And so our church is always a church that rolls up our sleeves and helps out in these times. And uh, we'll have more information about different ways that we can, we're going to help as a church coming up. But for now, what we're going to do is take up a special offering for Laura. And so all the three ways that I just mentioned, either by going to the church's website, uh, by mailing a check to the church, or by texting a gift, you can give to this offering. And so we just want to ask, if you go to the church's website, uh, make sure that you give in the section that says Laura. Uh, if you mail a check, write Laura in the, in the memo. And if you want to text a gift to this special offering, we ask you to text Laura, L-A-U-R-A, to 22525, and you'll get instructions back on how you can give a gift there. Uh, but again, we'll let you know other ways that our church is going to participate in relief efforts as we move forward. But for now, I just ask you to give and to give generously. Uh, The need is great. And with those things, I invite you to join me in, in prayer as we ask God's blessing over our offering. Let's pray. Faithful God, we gratefully acknowledge that you are the giver of all things. And you have asked us not just to be recipients of these gifts, but also to pour these gifts back out into the world uh, in the name of Jesus and in the name of your love. And Lord, we do ask a special blessing on all those who have been uh, affected by Hurricane Laura. Lord, may they know your peace. May they know your hope as they seek to rebuild their homes, their, their businesses, their very lives. And Lord, we pray also for all of those who will be helping in the recovery effort, uh, law enforcement officers, first responders, uh, uh, utility workers, all of those who will be reaching out in love and service to those in need. Lord, we ask that this very act of offering our gifts uh, will enable us to live a life of love and discipleship. We are blessed to receive, Lord. Help us to bless others as we give. Bless this offering, and it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Today's reading is from the book of Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the book of Romans has been called Paul's magnum opus or his great work. Uh, It's called the Cathedral of the Christian Faith, and some have called it the most profound book in existence. Martin Luther wrote, it can never be read or pondered too much, and that the more it is read, the more precious it becomes. But in the 12th chapter, which Karen just read from, uh, Paul describes how faith in Jesus Christ transforms a person. And then he goes on to describe the kind of behavior that comes from that transformed life. Depending on how you count, uh, Paul lists a total of 23 different behaviors that come from this transformation. Uh, Ready? Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another. Show honor. Stay enthusiastic. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. That's 10. Ready? We're going to keep going. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty or proud. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay evil for evil. Live peacefully with everyone. Do not seek vengeance. Bless your enemies and overcome evil with good. So again, that's 23 instructions that Paul gives. It's quite a list, isn't it? 
But one of the first things that stands out to me about Paul's list is how optimistic it is about what human beings are capable of, right? I mean, I get excited when somebody uses their turn signal or doesn't leave the shopping cart in the middle of a parking space in, <laughs> at the store, right? But Paul's vision is way greater than this for people. I mean, he actually imagines us living a life of love and generosity and hospitality and mercy and humility and peace with one another. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, Notre Dame coach Era Parsegian once said, a good coach makes his players see what they can be rather than what they are. And I really think that's what Paul is doing here with this list. He's painting a picture for us of who we can be and what life looks like when we are empowered by God's Holy Spirit. But I got to confess, when I read this list, it just seems like an awfully tall order to me. I mean, it it seems almost a little out of reach, doesn't it? I mean, I have a hard time living in peace with the person in my house who keeps putting their stuff on my bathroom counter. Uh, But Paul has this impression that I can be the kind of person who blesses my enemies and who lives at peace with everyone? (laughs) I don't know. So how about you? Uh, When you hear these 23 things, when you hear this long list of of behaviors that come as part of a transformed life, can you picture yourself living this way? Can you see yourself succeeding at this? So I mentioned that in the 12th chapter of Romans, Paul describes how faith in Jesus Christ transforms a person and then the behavior that comes out of that transformed life. Uh, But before he gets there, For the first 11 chapters of the book of Romans, Paul goes to great lengths really to explain two things. First, he exposes the brokenness of humanity and the darkness that we live in. And then he goes on to reveal our deep need for God's grace and mercy and how God has made that grace and mercy available in the person of Jesus Christ. But one of the most powerful moments in these first 11 chapters comes in the transition between the first chapter and the second chapter. Uh, And I want to read just a little bit to you, but pay special attention to the pronouns and what Paul does here. So this is what he says. Since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind and to things that should not be done. They were filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, craftiness. They are gossips and slanderers and God-haters, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, rebellious towards parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. They know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, and yet they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. And then he shifts. Therefore, you have no excuse, whoever you are, when you judge another. For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself because you, the judge, do the very same things. And I always just find that this amazing shift, right? Like what Paul does is he gets us pointing that finger real good at other people, doesn't he? Yeah, them and those people and them and they're the brokenness and all the bad things that they do. And right about the time he's got our finger really big and pointing in a really strong direction, he takes it and he turns it around and he goes, and you, you're no better. You do the exact same things, right? Uh, Paul actually goes on in, in Romans to say this, there is no one who is righteous, not even one. There is no one who has understanding. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned aside. And because we all have turned aside from the good ways of God, uh, we all deserve the consequences of having gone the wrong way. Who? All of us. So, uh, have you ever seen the video of the uh, two little brothers, and I think they're maybe like five or maybe three, and they are absolutely covered in paint, and their dad has got them sitting in the shower. I mean, they are just like, you know, black with paint or blue or purple, whatever, whatever color. I mean, they're just covered, right? And apparently what happened is they got paint out somewhere in the house, and they got it all over the place, on the couch, on the walls, all over whatever room they were in, and again, they are completely covered in it. Their, da- their dad's got 
him in the shower. He's interrogating them, and he's got a video camera on them. And it's, it's really cute, but it's also, I think, really, really insightful. So one of the first questions their dad asks them is this. He goes, whose idea was this? And, the, and again, these just two little boys sitting there, and you can just, they both give a really big shrug. You know, neither says a word, they just give a big shrug, right? Uh, and then he says, do you think this was a good idea? And they both just, there's a big, again, they're not talking. They're just big shaking of their heads. No, no, this was not a good idea. And then the dad says, who got the paint out? And this is when it gets really interesting because this is when the older brother immediately points at the younger brother. The younger brother tries to cover in the beginning. He kind of shrugs at first, but then he realizes his older brother's blaming him. And so he starts shaking his head, no. And this is when the dad says, uh, are you guys in trouble? And they both, again, this big, big nods. And the little, little, itty, little boy says, big trouble. <laughs> and then the dad asks the question, well, what should we do? What should we do? And, and again, they go, huh? I don't know. I don't know. And I got to tell you that I think Paul's point uh, in Romans is that we're just like these two brothers. Every single one of us, we are all covered in sin and brokenness. We have all made a mess out of this life and out of this world. We are all equally broken. We are all equally to blame. Uh, I like to say that we are all victims because we've all been victims of brokenness in this life, right? But we're also all perpetrators. We've also done something to contribute to the brokenness in this life. Paul actually says, there is no distinction between us. Uh, when it comes to the mess of sin, every single one of us is covered with it. Uh, now listen, this is very different than that, what the world tells us. It really is, right? See, think about it. The world tells us that when it comes to brokenness and when it comes to the pain and difficulty in the world, it's everybody else's fault. Uh, it tells us to point the finger, to play the blame game, to think that other people are the real bad guys out there. And so that's what we do, right? We blame our spouses. We blame our parents. We blame, blame Democrats. We blame Republicans. We blame Black Lives Matter. We blame the police. We blame gay people. We blame the religious right. We blame capitalism. We blame socialism. I mean, let, let's get to it, right? It's a wonder that we don't all have sprained pointer fingers, right, with all the pointing that goes on. But I got to tell you, this is not the way of Christ. It's not. See, Christians, again, are people who recognize our own brokenness. We recognize our own contribution to the darkness and sin in the world. And in doing so, we also recognize our deep need for God's grace and God's mercy in our lives. And I would actually suggest to you, it's by recognizing our own brokenness and our own contribution that we open ourselves to the grace and mercy of God that then come in to that brokenness and that darkness. So think about those two brothers again for a second. Uh, which one of them is capable of getting the other one clean? Uh, you ever been in a situation where you had just such a mess on your hands that as you tried to like clean up the mess, all you did was just spread more of it around, right? Uh, I mean, every single time one of those brothers touches the other one, they're just going to get more paint on themselves and more paint on their clothes and more paint on the room, right? Uh, and this is another way that we're all in this together. None of us are capable of pulling ourselves out of this mess. None of us are capable of cleaning the other up, although we like to think that we are. But the good news is, this is exactly why God sent Jesus into the world, to rescue us, to save us, to pull us out of the mess, to clean us up. Now, uh, I don't have a whole lot of time to talk about how that happens, uh, but I want to offer a C.S. Lewis quote that I think sort of encapsulates how this happens, and maybe it give, give you something a little to think about. C.S. Lewis says this, the Christian does not think that God will love us because we are good, but that God will make us good because God loves us. So let me ask you this, which way have you chosen uh, when you look at the brokenness in the world, when you look at the brokenness in your own life, uh, have, you, have you taken the world's way, you know? Do you, do you play the blame game? Is it somebody else's fault? Or do, you, or do you do it Jesus' way, where you take an honest look at yourself and say, hey, look, I can see where I've contributed to the brokenness in the world. 
Uh, and in doing that, do you invite God's mercy and God's grace into your heart and into your life to transform you and begin to clean you up? Which, which one better describes the way you're living? So do you know what the clearest indication is uh, that God's love and grace are at work in someone? You know what the clearest indication is? It's when they stop blaming, they stop pointing the finger, they stop wanting God to gotcha everybody else, uh, and they find themselves able to extend the same grace and mercy that God has given them to others, right? I mean, God has poured grace and mercy into my life. It's only natural then for me to extend that grace and mercy to others, to stop blaming everyone else. And to be a person who not only receives the grace of God, but who transmits the grace of God. And that's exactly what I see Paul doing in this list here. Uh, I don't see this list as some, like, you know, thing that I'm supposed to Hercules, like, pick up every morning and say, I've got to go do these 23 things. I'm going to grit my teeth today and try, try as hard as I can to be good. What I see in this list are the actions of a person extending the same grace and mercy that God has given them to others, right? Isn't that, isn't that what you see there? So it seems like we're seeing more and more brokenness in the world today. It's the way it seems. Uh, but I got to tell you, this is nothing new. Uh, actually, what we're seeing is quite old. John Wesley uh, calls it the loathsome leprosy of sin, right? Uh, I just think it's coming to the surface more nowadays for, for a lot of different reasons. But it's ugly, isn't it? I mean, isn't it ugly? And as this ugly emerges, uh, we have a choice. We have a choice. Either we can do it the world's way, we can point the finger, we can blame others, we can create divisions, we can think other people, they're the real bad guys. Or we can do it Jesus' way. We can recognize our own brokenness, uh, our own contribution. We can recognize that, boy, when it comes to brokenness, we're all in this together. We can look within. Uh, we can invite Jesus to live within us. Uh, Jesus' power, Jesus' grace, Jesus' mercy, Jesus' love. Uh, and we can be people who, who, not, who don't just receive that love and grace, but who transmit it and extend it to others. Now listen, this doesn't mean we can't have opinions and things that are going on in the world. It doesn't mean we can't act, we can't march, we can't vote, we can't scream, we can't yell and cry and do all of those things. Uh, we need to be participants in what's going on in the world, absolutely. But as we do, if we claim the name of Jesus, we just need to make sure that we check ourselves. Uh, are we doing it the world's way or are we doing it Jesus' way. Uh, and how do you know? How do you know? Uh, Paul's list is actually a pretty good starting place. So listen to it again. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another. Show honor. Stay enthusiastic. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the church. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay evil for evil. Live peacefully with everyone. Do not seek vengeance. Bless your enemies and overcome evil with good. And do you know where these things come from? They come when I have received the grace and love of God in my life. And because I recognize my need for that grace and that love and that mercy, I extend it to others. It comes when I recognize that we are all in this together. Will you join me in prayer? Lord God, we give you thanks for Jesus. Uh, we thank you that he believed in us and that he was such a great optimist about what we, your children, are capable of. 
And so, Lord, we ask that you help us to see our own broken places, our own darkness. We ask that you uh, help us to invite your power, your grace, your mercy to clean us up. And then, Lord, we ask that you help us to extend that same grace and mercy to others. Because, Lord, the greatest indicator that you are at work in us is when we extend your grace to others. Lord, bless us, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we believe that the Christian life is best lived out in the context of a community, that following Jesus is really a team sport. And so uh, I want to invite you, if you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a community to be a part of, to consider making First United Methodist Church that church home. And uh, we have a gathering that we call Believe and Belong, and uh, the upcoming dates for it are September 27th and 29th. We're doing it online right now. And... uh, it's, a, it's really a conversation that we have where we talk about what it means to believe in Jesus and to profess Jesus as Savior and what it means to be a committed part of a community of faith. And so if, if, you're, if you're kind of feeling the tug on God's spirit, uh, from God's Spirit uh, to know more about following Jesus or to become a part of this church, I want to invite you to attend Believe and Belong. You can contact Karen Milioto and uh, she'll either be able to give you more information or sign you up to attend.
chorus again. Cause when you speak, when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we seek. When you come in the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes So before I offer a closing thought and blessing this morning, I do want to encourage you to share this worship service with others. Uh, you know, one of the things you can always do as we begin worship is start a watch party, but I think you could even start watch parties now on Facebook with the, with the finished video. But help us to get the word out about Jesus and to invite other people to worship him by sharing this worship service with others. So we are seeing a lot of ugly in the world right now. There's just no doubt about that. And when we see ugly, we have a choice to make. Uh, we can do it the world's way, which is to point the finger, to blame others, and to think that those other people, they're the real bad guys. Or we can do it Jesus' way. I can check myself. I can remember that I play a part in the brokenness in the world. Uh, I can recognize that I need God's mercy and grace and then extend that mercy and grace to others. And know that when it comes to what really changes the world, it is that love and that grace and that mercy that God has made available to us in Jesus Christ. So go now, go out into this week, seek to be a blessing to others. Seek to be a person who not only receives God's mercy and grace, but who pours it out into the world around you. Go with the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.